everything is an aha moment. Every single thing. Um, so I didn't really know what to talk about. Um, but uh, if you ask me what the most profound aha moment I've ever had in my life, it actually happened with the last three years. Um, I realized at age 30 that to my horror, um, I'm not, in fact, normal. And I actually really thought I was. I thought that my thought patterns, every single thing that went through my head, went through everybody else's head. I just happened to say it faster, because um, I'm really aggressive in my conversation. But I should have known. And I should have known because um, my dad, who I turned to when I need advice, um, whenever I vented, he said to me, Amy, maybe the problem here is that you're thinking a lot, and you should stop <laughs> thinking. And I should have realized because my husband actually doesn't love me, or at least he didn't know he could love me because of my intellect. He said that the moment he realized he could love me was when I was laughing at myself because um, I had just face planted in some mulch when I was trying to jump off of a swing at a playground. Um, but most of all, I should have known because there are a lot of awkward pauses in the conversations I take part in because I make a lot of connections and I'm really, really excited about them. And I always end with, you know, and no one does. And um, it might be because I remember something that they don't, or I read something I thought everybody read, but they don't. You can see where this is going. So when I say I'm not normal, I'm not trying to say that I'm an exemplary individual and everyone needs to feel good about themselves for breaking conformity, because I do realize that everyone is not normal. Normal is a construction. I just mean that um, I'm sort of inappropriate sometimes and awkward, but it works for me, and I like it. And I just want to give you an example so you don't think I'm being dramatic. My doctor asked me, how are you feeling? And I should have said, I don't know what you want me to do because I don't really have very good body awareness. But instead I said, you know that Calvin and Hobbes cartoon strip where Calvin wants to be a firefly but he doesn't know which muscles to flex? She probably just wanted to say, Amy, you're giving birth, so just push. But I thought it was normal to make that kind of illusion. It is, in fact, not normal. And um, it's a little distracting for a doctor who wants to do her job. Um, but the thing is, is that I'm kind of compulsive about these things. And I wish I could turn it off, but I can't. Um, and I get a lot of emotional satisfaction from them in spite of how many times some of these connections are illogical, or they're not really relevant to people, or how many awkward stares I get. Because I find the world to be fairly chaotic and terrifying sometimes, and these aha moments, this making meaning, is the only thing that gives me some sort of hope that my life has meaning and that I can solve some problems I find fairly overwhelming. So, these moments, these aha moments for me are when I realize that my children trust me and that's why they feel totally comfortable hurling themselves off of any object anywhere despite how tall it may be or dangerous. They think I'm always going to be there to catch them. They trust me. Aha. Um, or in my work, I realize that I'm not necessarily a bad teacher because I can't inspire my students. In fact, what's probably happening is, is that I've unwittingly become part of a culture that doesn't necessarily allow students the time and um, the right kind of environment where they can process and make these connections of their own. A lot of these students are too tired, too overwhelmed, or just too daunted by um, the competitive nature of education that's happening across the country and across the world. But these connections are part of my work because when I open a book to teach it, I don't necessarily think to myself, what am I teaching today? What I see is a sentence that totally reorients my life and it gives me some sort of understanding that if I can teach a student to look at the first pages of Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale and teach them that that small tiny sentence where she says, there is no female equivalent for the word fraternize, sororicize does not exist, then maybe students will realize that language, that storytelling, that those tiny little connections 
have a way of reorienting the way that we think about society and the problems that we can solve. It's also true that sometimes I just actually um, make these connections where I listen to Frozen soundtracks on repeat and I realize that the opening song, which is Big Burly Men Cutting Ice, is actually about Elsa because she is a beauty, sharp and sheer, and she lets it go. I can keep on doing this and you can see all the connections, but we're, we're running out of time. Um, in other words, what I'm trying to say is, is that aha moments for me are making meaning. And they happen all the time and they happen um, in some ways that should validate every moment of our life, even if that means that it's overwhelming. Um, it gives us a way of questioning what's going on. And this isn't necessarily my idea. We've heard the word epiphany before, um, and this was popularized by James Joyce. And in teaching Dubliners, I teach them about moments he captures that are tense and dramatic, and you understand that these moments are moments that could change a character's lives. But I also teach these moments in these stories where characters fail to realize how different their lives could be or how little their lives matter that they don't catch the aha moment because it was too small or too common. So I try to teach students, say aha, look at that aha moment, that's a connection. Track it, find the pattern, see what works. Um, and I say, find it everywhere. You can watch a movie about a princess and it's fairly entertaining. Or you can take that same movie into your classroom and say I'm gonna play a short musical number for you. And don't you think that Mother Gothel saying Mother Knows Best is actually a big brother and using fear and love and loyalty is actually as powerful as physical force, if not more so, in oppressing people? Isn't this like Jane Eyre and how women are told, be domestic, stay inside, everything will be fine? So, in other words, when we think about aha moments, I don't think that we're waiting for them. I think that they're happening all the time. And you can find those connections anywhere, at any moment. And I think you should. And I think we should celebrate them, even if you don't realize that it's happening. When you sail through the air and you face plant and mulch, you probably don't realize that someone is either falling in love with you or could fall in love with you. And so it is better to laugh, and it's good to feel good about that. Um, but collect your moments and make your connections, even if they're small and even if they're not, in fact, normal. Thank you very much.